the Sphinx SDP subcompact pistol. Let's check it out. The Sphinx SDP Subcompact. I did a review last year on their standard compact model. Just a really finely crafted handgun. Uh, it's Swiss made. In fact, the Sphinx company has been in business since 1876, but making firearms since the 1980s. Uh, in fact, their original models were used in a lot of the competitive circuits for an, and have been used for a number of years because of their really tight tolerances, they're highly accurate, a lot of that has to do, of course, with the CZ inspired design. These are somewhat of a CZ hybrid. Uh, you know, CZ's, uh, the CZ 75 is the most copied uh, handgun in the world, right next to the 1911. A lot of companies have been able to mimic, or really, again, it's inspired uh, with the CZ 75 design. Now, I'm going to tell you one thing about the Sphinx SDP, and even more so, they're really uh, high end pistols is that these are the top of the bunch I mean the quality the craftsmanship the tight tolerances this to me takes the CZ 75 to its ultimate level first thing we're going to do is make sure the gun is unloaded remove the magazine go ahead and check the chamber and it's unloaded now this is a double single action pistol we have the hammer back and I'm going to show you the safety first you just it does have a decocker that brings it down into a half cock position the double action pull is around 10 pounds but it's really smooth it's just a really smooth all the way through trigger pull there is a nub here where you can pull the hammer out uh, and especially when you have it in the half cock position it makes it really easy uh, the single action trigger pull is right at five and a half pounds in fact i got that very consistently over and over now we have a reset really quick i mean it brings it in nice you have an ample trigger guard right here uh, especially for gloved hands one of the most unique features about the sphinx pistols at least the new sdp models is it has a really nice steel uh, slide on top uh, which is treated what they call the tie-in, which is a, a titanium aluminum nitride coating. And that's just a really fancy term for a really hard coated surface. Uh, in fact, it's very scratch resistant and obviously weather resistant. Uh, but the real unique thing is right here, this whole area is actually an aluminum alloy. Uh, so you have this aluminum alloy and then you have polymer in the grip and the trigger guard. Now, one of the big things that this allows, uh, the weight reduction with the polymer and the strength around the grip, but with the aluminum here, not only does it reduce the weight over steel, but it really allows for the trigger and all the internal components to be very precise. Uh, you know, polymer flexes, polymer moves. And so this really gives you the ability to really make this a world-class pistol. Each one is hand-fitted uh, by a master gunsmith at the Sphinx facility in Switzerland. Now one of the reasons though why they went with the polymer is it's a lot less expensive to produce, uh, to fit, and really the early models uh, of the Sphinx pistols, especially the competition models, could run up to $3,000. Now the polymer is very nicely textured. Of course you have checkering here, it's kind of a, a crosshatch type pattern, and then we have checkering right in here, or texturing, that allows for your hand to fit right up through here. And you can see how thin 
that it gets right here at the grip. And this really allows for a lot of control of the pistol. The back strap has nice little square texturing on the front and on the back strap. There are some very subdued finger grooves which seem to really fit the hand well. I'm not a big finger groove guy. I like to have the grip that I want to put on here. But this seems to just fit very naturally. Also, the trigger guard's cut really high right here, so it allows you to get your hand up. And that's going to help with the bore axis. It's going to keep it low in the hand. Which helps with recoil because of the axis. It rides in just the right spot. Here we have Sphinx, Switzerland. Then we have the symbol of the Sphinx. On this side, Chris USA, and this is the importer, and they are the producers of the Chris Vector. So a really high quality company all the way around. One of the great things though about this is even though it's a subcompact and with the magazine inserted, uh, you have a full grip on the pistol. Now if you have really large hands, you may be hanging off a little bit. Uh, my hands are medium, so but still I can get a full firing grip on the pistol no problem uh, and there are it's 13 in 1 magazine capacity you do get two magazines uh, they're very nicely made I'm sure these are probably Metgar magazines because they are made in Italy uh, but they are marked Sphinx right here on the magazine orange follower polymer base plate it is an ambidextrous pistol as in the decocker is on both sides uh, the slide release is only on one side which is typical the magazine release can be switched to either side, so that really helps for left-handed shooters. And again, you have your decocker. Uh, one of the things about this pistol, though, if you pull the trigger all the way through, it, the hammer will return all the way into the flat position. But, of course, once you fire it, it'll bring it back here and your hammer will be in the rear position for your second follow-up shots has nice serrations on the slide and on the front of the slide which makes it uh, really easy to grab hold of to do press checks or just to grab and pull. The slide is cut back here all the way along the top and this really allows for you to insert into holsters, makes it a lot more thin and uh, just has a full grip here and then you can see the, the aluminum coming down here around the bottom and this aluminum again it's all along the bottom here and comes out and then it makes a nice beaver tail. The aluminum frame has a really hard anodized finish on this, so it's going to keep it looking nice a lot longer. Uh, it's going to resist scratches and abrasions, and it's just going to hold up very well. Uh, it's very comfortable to wear. Uh, I've carried this now, uh, just testing it out, making sure, and it's really slick lines. Uh, the controls are very slick right here. And as far as dimensions of the pistol, it's six and a quarter inches in length. It's 4.9 in height and it's 1.2 inches in width and a lot of that has to do with your safety or decocker levers right here but it is a very thin very clean pistol and the weight comes in at 27.5 ounces the sights are all steel they do rise up in the back uh, it is blacked out in the back and then it has the white dot at the front for contrast which I really like uh, you, because they have holes here drilled, you can add white paint if you choose to. Uh, they do offer some tritium sights for the rear and then a fiber optic on the front. And I believe it's backed by tritium. I'm not positive about that, but I'm pretty sure. So uh, it does give you some other options as well. But really, as far as a concealed carry pistol, these sights are just excellent. Disassembly is very simple. Of course, you want to make sure the gun isn't loaded. There's a hash mark on the frame, there's a hash mark on the slide. You want to bring those together, pressing right here to push out your slide stop. Slide stop comes right out. And the slide just removes from the frame. Recoil spring, it's captive, steel. Bring out your barrel. One of the things too about this barrel is that it actually fits into the top of the slide as well. So it's a really solid lockup. In fact, when you push it in, you can feel the tension to pull it loose. And so that's going to give you even tighter uh, tolerances, which will lead to better accuracy. The machining on the inside of the pistol is excellent. I mean, you can tell that all of these are CNC machined, uh, forged steel, very solid. Everything is just solid in here. Uh, very comparable to the original CZ, uh, but yet there's some differences. One of the things too I've noticed is there's a buffer system right here and this is also going to be on the compact and the full-size SDP pistols. 
The aluminum frame is going to be more rigid. It's going to give you a little more strength uh, than with the polymer. Polymer is really great and it's strong, but it's a little bit flexible. Uh, with the aluminum, you're going to be able to achieve really tight tolerances. And this is all you do to field strip. To reassemble your barrel, take your guide rod onto the frame. Go ahead and line up your little hash marks. Snap it. Ready for action. And guys, with this pistol, you're going to be ready to hit the range as often as possible. The barrel is three and a quarter inches. It is the solid link design rather than the open design. Uh, one of the other big things about this design, which is with all CZs, is the internal slide rails. So you have rails on the slide itself, and you can see them, and they're full slide rails. Uh, with a lot of the new polymer frame pistols, you have little steel inserts here and here that hold the slide in. Uh, but this is going to give you consistent gliding on the frame. It's one of the reasons why the frame is so high right here. And then, of course, that meets with the slide rails right here in the frame. At the range, really accurate. Uh, very smooth shooting. A lot of that has to do with the internal slide rails. It just rides, low bore axis. Um, everything that you can expect out of a CZ that's on steroids because this gun has just been finely finished. And you can really tell that at the range. Uh, it's very tight and it shoots very crisp. The ergonomics are exceptional, very thin grip, very um, CZ-esque with the way it comes down. No, there's not any interchangeable back straps, but to be honest with you, I put one on, I leave it on. And really for a subcompact pistol that you're going to be carrying every day, you want something really thin, something small. And yet, it goes all the way to the end of my hand. There's no pinky hanging off like most of the subcompact pistols. But you do have 13 plus 1. So that gives you a lot of rounds. Now, Swiss-made precision quality does come with a price. And considering the workmanship that goes into this and the hand fitting and the really tight tolerances and just the state-of-the-art pistol. Uh, I've seen it in a number of places for $899. I did see it at Tombstone Tactical for $856. Brand new. As far as pros and cons, definitely the fit and finish of this pistol is a huge pro. Uh, just very well executed. All the tolerances are really tight and yet it's very reliable and definitely very accurate. Uh, if there's anything that I could say that would be a con uh, would definitely be you know the price tag but you get what you pay for. So price tags not really a con when you look at it as in it's the quality that it has into, built into it but the Sphinx SDP subcompact pistol is really just a very fine crafted work of art. Now you can go to sphinxarms.com to check out all the different details and the different models that they produce. But I think that if you're really looking for a world-class pistol in the CZ-inspired design, you're not going to beat the Sphinx SDP pistol line. They are just fantastic. Is it worth the extra money? Well, that's for you to decide. But if you want a state-of-the-art pistol, I think it's going to be hard to beat. So the Sphinx SDP subcompact pistol, thumbs way up. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. The most powerful handgun in the world.